Good day and welcome to Drew's Book Reviews. So today we are going to talk about five fantasy series that I personally have really enjoyed and really liked. So if you're interested in hearing about five of my favorite fantasy series, stay tuned because that is coming right up. Okay, so five fantasy book series that I personally have really enjoyed and really loved. Now the problem with doing this type of video for me is picking just five because there are so many good fantasy book series out there. There are so many that I would definitely consider my favorite fantasy book series. So it's could be really, really hard to pick just five or even just 10. I'd probably have the same problem if I wanted to go into just 15 or 20. But like my top five science fiction uh, books and my five self pub book videos which I will link in the cards so keep an eye out for that <clears throat> like those ones I decided to keep this one as a five choice video as well so let, let's get right into it shall we <clears throat> the first book series that I picked to make this list and these were all hard choices because like I said so many could have made the list but the first one would be Brian McClellan's Powder Mage World this is just a phenomenal series. I absolutely love the Powder Mage world. This is a world which kind of have a, a flintlock, you know, it's got guns and magic all mixed together. Uh, military, military fantasy book series. And I absolutely love the magic system within this book. I mean, basically you got people snorting gunpowder to give them their magical abilities. And they're called Powder Mages. Uh, so they, they receive their magic from the gunpowder that's also used in the weaponry of the artillery and military and the guns as well and, and that is just really kind of a really cool magic system that i really like this whole series opens up with basically a military coup and overthrowing of the respective government within this world and it just jumps right into the action from the start. It got me hooked from the start. And as I understand, Brian McClellan was actually a student of Brandon Sanderson uh, at his uh, courses on creative writing at BYU. So that's just really awesome to see one of his students and ha come out with such an amazing book as well. I would say that speaks volumes about Brandon Sanderson's ability to teach creative writing, but also the quality of the students he has in his class. But at the end of the day, Powder Mage, is just a phenomenal read and I absolutely love right now there I believe there are six books in this world uh, which uh, I've read almost all of them but the sixth one they're actually two different trilogy sets at the moment but definitely I'd recommend the Powder Mage especially if you like that kind of military fantasy uh, type of book that involves you know actual guns and cannons and typical military that you might see uh, in in the modern world essentially or kind of modern i guess it's uh, not all not all from the 21st century but maybe early 20th century late 19th century type military fantasy but really really good read nonetheless and i definitely recommend you check out brian mcclellan's powder mage World. the next book series that i would definitely recommend you check out is terry goodkind's sword of truth series this is quite a long series of books uh, but I think it's well worth it uh, as far as the whole series as a whole goes and everything that's created within the world that Terry Goodkind has built around the Sword of Truth. The Sword of Truth world has about 20 books in it currently and that's all that I would expect to see from it since Terry Goodkind has passed away now. Uh, I did a bit of a Terry Goodkind tribute video on my channel a while back. If you want to check that out, I'll have that linked in the annotations there but essentially this world um, now this world I wouldn't say has my favorite type of characters necessarily but it's a world that I absolutely love as far as the fantasy genre goes we got our main characters Richard who's this war wizard he gets these magical powers from his sword of truth to administer truth and justice throughout the land and then you've got the mother confessor Kaylin M. Nell she's like this individual with these supernatural magical powers where she can basically want a single touch of her power will enslave the individual to her 
to her will to do whatever she wants and it's genetically inherited but she's the last confessor of this world in this world she's the last one and these two kind of come together in this epic grand adventure you know richard it's the typical story arc that you see the hero's journey where richard is basically a farm boy who discovers he's actually more than that and he goes on this journey after saving Kaylin, and now Kaylin from a band of uh, a group of men who are trying to capture her uh, and he kind of gets wrapped up in this hole, discovers the truth about the Daharan Empire and this barrier that blocks his part of the world from the rest of the world. And it just kind of goes throughout the entire 20 volume series. Although it does kind of branch off a bit with the last little books, but the main story arc, the main set of books, really focused on Kaylin and Richard throughout the entire series. Now, I love this series so much uh, that I actually named two of my daughters after characters from this book series. Uh, Kaylin and Kara uh, are both named after characters from this book series. Now, this book series definitely has uh, a strong female uh, characters within this book along with that. Now, the only, the only drawback I really have about the series is it does have a very black and white, good versus evil type of viewpoint and positioning of the characters. You know, there's a objectively the right and objectively the wrong or at least that's how it's positioned that that for me i don't mind it actually uh, i mean like i said overall it did make my favorite fantasy book series so it's definitely not that that's necessarily a big enough drawback for me as far as the books go but i do like kind of the more gray characters where you know there isn't a clear good guy or bad guy type scenario i really kind of enjoy those quite a bit more we kind of see that through uh George R. R. Martin's Fire and Ice, that series isn't on the list, but just to give an idea, uh, the morally gray, uh, no clear good guy or bad guy type thing, you know, I do do like those characterizations quite a bit as well. But in any case, I digress. Sword of Truth series by Terry Goodkind. This is actually where we get the wizard's rules, uh, which I really kind of enjoyed. There's a lot of really great wizard's rules and as we go through each book you kind of pick up a new wizard's rule that applies to the situation in the book and kind of grows the idea behind what it means to be a wizard in this world which is pretty pretty interesting way to do it you always want to pick up the next book and learn what the next rule is so we have the sword of truth being one of my favorite fantasy book series that i have read okay so next up on this list of favorite fantasy series that I have read, we have what I consider to be one of the best urban fantasy series ever written, bar none. That is The Dresden Files. Absolutely love it. I just recently published a Dresden Files book review. I've got a whole Dresden Files playlist here on the channel. So if you haven't checked it out, definitely do. But essentially The Dresden Files is about Harry Dresden, the only practicing wizard in Chicago. He's listed in the phone book. You can call him up for magical investigations. And throughout the entire series, he's battling all kinds of, you know, demons and monsters. We got werewolves, we got vampires, we got fairy creatures, we've got the White Council of Wizards. And he just got all kinds of crazy mythical magical creatures and monsters that he spends his entire career in the Dresden Files battling and fighting to the very end. This, this book series just keeps getting better and better and better as we go along. And Harry's story arc throughout this series is just incredible from start to finish. So the amount that he grows as a character and the amount that he has to go through and the trials and suffering that he has to endure in order to get through this this life of his essentially and how he survives so many obstacles to overcome the decisions he has to make can be heartbreaking at times and just you grow to love harry as a character and you honestly you know you know that the decision he made is probably not the best decision but you understand why he's making those decisions and it seems no matter what choice he makes in an effort to protect everyone he is constantly getting himself into bigger and bigger trouble his friends are being drawn into it and they keep trying to tell look harry you're not in this alone you don't have to do this alone you know stop behaving as if you're alone in this we're here we're fighting along with you but harry has a very difficult time um not wanting to do it on his own because he doesn't want anyone else involved a lot of the times he doesn't want to put anyone else at risk 
and just the whole series is just a phenomenally well-written and executed book series and I'm absolutely loving it from start to finish and I really look forward to getting Peace Talks and Battlegrounds. I know they kind of came out last year but I haven't got them yet. I will get them and I will get to reading them. I promise you that and there will be reviews of those ones once I get around to them. But yeah, I mean, The Dresden Files is just a fantastic book series, especially in the urban fantasy genre, and I'd highly recommend taking a look at it, picking it up, and reading it. Just, just a phenomenal book series. I absolutely love The Dresden Files. So, you know, definitely check that out. That'll be worth checking out for you for sure. Okay, so next up we have The Wheel of Time by Robert Jordan, finished off by Brandon Sanderson. This has effectively become a classic of fantasy. Uh, many people have equated it or referenced its similarity, at least at the beginning of the series, to the Lord of the Rings epic. And yeah, there are a lot of similarities there. But you know, that that's just fine because man, a lot of fantasy tends to take elements and inspiration from other fantasies. So that in and of itself, totally cool with. At the end of the day, The Wheel of Time is just this epic monster of a series, which really is a fantastic series of books from start to finish. The whole concept of The Wheel of Time is that, you know, time is cyclical in nature and that it's a constant circle where we start at one point and we go through these ages where we just circle back to the beginning and everything starts all over again. So there is no true beginning or end of time or the universe. It's just this wheel which turns and each new age starts a new beginning and the cycle starts over again. So we have Rand who is the dragon reborn. Uh, you know, and he is not the first dragon reborn. Essentially, he's not the first dragon. It's that this is a cycle that has perpetuated over and over and over again throughout history. And, you know, it's definitely got those elements of the hero's journey, especially with Rand. Typical, you know, farm boy finds out he's the savior of the world and he eventually has to accept it and do his job to save the world, essentially. But The Wheel of Time is just a phenomenal series. I'm actually rereading it for the third time. Uh, through the Wheel of Time series so that I could put a video review of each book in the series up on the channel. And I, I, I am really, really looking forward to and anticipating um, being or enjoying the Wheel of Time on Prime. I really can't wait till that comes out. I'm so excited for that. It's kind of what inspired me to start re-reading re the Wheel of Time again for the third time. I'm just super, super excited about the Wheel of Time on Prime. Uh, and I've seen the little drops that have come out with the Wheel of Time and, you know, it's looking really good. I'm really looking forward to that. And overall, the Wheel of Time itself is just love the series. Absolutely love it. And it actually is what got me into Brandon Sanderson to begin with because he finished off the Wheel of Time. And I thought, well, you know, if he's good enough to finish Robert Jordan's Wheel of Time, he must be good writer in general. And that's kind of when I picked up Mistborn, The Final Empire. Um, and his other books that he has, which kind of actually directly leads us into my fifth and final choice for this video, as far as favorite book series of all, or favorite fantasy series uh, that I've selected for this particular video. And that is the Stormlight Archive. This is a phenomenal book series that takes place in the greater Cosmere that Brandon Sanderson has created. What I love about Sanderson and his series is this whole concept of the Cosmere made up of all these different worlds. In each world, he's set a different book series and each world has a different magic system. And each magic system is different because each world was basically created out of the shards of a god that was killed and destroyed, scattering throughout existence, creating the Cosmere in the first place. And these different pieces of God have different abilities and powers which kind of imbue that world with the magic system that is connected to that shard or piece of God. And it's just, just the concept itself is just amazing. And by far the best series within the Cosmere, my favorite, is definitely the Stormlight Archive. I absolutely love the world that has been created by Brandon Sanderson with the Stormlight Archive. And this one is supposed to kind of be his epic grand masterpiece, the largest of the series, 
the most in depth. Each one of these books being something like a thousand plus pages. These are not small books. They, they are absolutely massive books. So far there's four of them out and my understanding is there's supposed to be 10 of the Stormlight Archive books. And, and just everything about it, it's a world where these spren, these little creatures are kind of drawn from this cognitive realm to the realms of men and the world of which we find ourselves Roshar. And these spren are basically embodiments of individuals, passions, fears, anxieties, their emotional state, as well as many other things. And in this world, we have the magic system imbued with the stormlight. This world is known for its savage and terrifying and massive storms. And the stormlight itself is a key component or the, the lightning, I guess, from the storms. They it imbues their user with these magical properties and powers, but only if they're bonded to a particular type of spren. Uh, and for the Knight's Radiant side, that means the Honor Spren. If you haven't checked out some of my videos on, on the Stormlight Archive, definitely do so. I'll try to remember to link the playlists below uh, or, or in the annotations. But yeah, I mean, definitely Stormlight Archive, epic fantasy, big books. It is a big commitment, but it's a commitment worth making. It is just a phenomenal series of books that I absolutely love. I, you know, honestly, uh, I if if my kids were born after I'd read the Stormlight Archive, they probably would have been named after characters from the Stormlight Archive. Uh, and I, I absolutely love where this book series has gone. I love where it's going, and I really can't wait for the fifth book in the series, uh, which I know it's still a ways away, but definitely hugely anticipated. In any case, those are my five picks for five of my favorite fantasy book series that have been written, that I have enjoyed, and that I have read. So, you know, tell me what you think below. Tell me if you've enjoyed this book, any of these book series. Is there any you think I should have included? Again, I've read a lot of fantasy book series, uh, so I, I didn't want to just make a list a video of all the ones I've enjoyed. So, it was hard to decide. I've actually been thinking about this for several several weeks trying to decide which ones to include but you know tell me which ones you would include in your favorite fantasy series down below you know like comment and subscribe and let me know what you think have you read any of these series i've talked about look forward to hearing from you in the comments below and as I always like comment and subscribe also if you do do like what i do here you can support me on patreon for as little as a dollar per month that will be linked below as well i do have a discord if you want to join me over there that would be awesome as well and you know and until next time thank you so much for watching i do appreciate it and we will see you next time on the next episode of drew's book reviews until then keep on reading bye